S Corporation Tax General Concepts Problem 1. Golden Glow Corporation is a calendar year S Corporation with the following current year information. Operating loss $120,000. Liabilities. Notes payable to Big Island Bank $30,000. Notes payable to Pineapple, an individual $20,000. On January 1st, Pineapple bought 60% of Golden Glow Corporation for $45,000. She then loaned Golden Glow Corporation $20,000, which is the amount above under liabilities. How much of the operating loss may Pineapple deduct currently? All right, we have a loss limitation question. It's asking how much of the operating loss may Pineapple deduct currently in this, which currently means in the tax year, in the tax year. We're told that Golden Glow uh, Corporation has a total operating loss of $120,000. We're told that Pineapple bought 60% this year. And the first step we're going to do and this goes along with comparing partnership loss limitation, entities, taxes, partnerships versus S corporations because there are differences in terms of how much loss can be taken considering the liabilities. What you're going to see liabilities are involved here. Liabilities are involved. All right. And I'm going to make some distinctions between what would happen if this was a partnership versus if it was not a partnership, which we are here, we are an S corporation. So keep that in mind. And also I'm going to make some other differences depending on the, um, the liability if there's any personally loan, which we're going to have here because pineapple individual per individual person loans the S corporation, which that is going to have an effect as well. So first step, we're going to take the total operating loss and we're going to multiply that by the ownership percentage. Now with partnerships, part any entities taxes partnerships, the rule or the idea is that partnerships are extremely flexible. They're meant to be that way. With S corporations, S stands for small business. I like to also say S for simple. The rules are not flexible. They're every the rules are just straightforward, plain. They're not meant to be like, you know, sophisticated transactions where you have one owner contributing cash and one being a service partner where they're contributing like their expertise or or time. No, it's just an S corporation is just plain Jane, just straightforward making sure the rules are, are that way. And the ownership, based on what you own in stock, so here 60%, that's always going to be how you allocate income, losses, gains, whatever it is, profits, whatever it is. So we take 120000 of the, which is the loss for the year, multiply that by 60%, and we're going to get $72,000 of loss. Now that is the most loss that we can take because that is the amount the partnership has, and we allocate 60% to Pineapple, uh, the individual. But as you know, there are limits when it comes to losses. The general idea in tax is that income generally is broad and deductions or losses are narrow. So losses, you better, you better believe it, are going to be very limited. And the biggest uh, loss limitation that you should make sure you understand because it makes a difference based on the entity is the adjusted basis idea that and, 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 um, other limit and other aspects of the adjusted basis that go into the loss limitations, because whether it's a partnership or an S corporation, you're limited by your basis. You're limited by your basis. So step two, we consider the adjusted basis limitations. We consider the adjusted basis limits in terms of taking this loss, this full $72,000 loss. Now, just like partnership tax, we take the amount paid for the ownership, which here is $45,000. So our stock, our stock adjusted basis, well, Pineapple purchased the stock this year, so it's just going to be the amount paid, the $45,000. That is what our basis is. Now, next year, if there was income earned and it was allocated to the partners, which they pay tax on, that increases basis. If um, the part, I'm sorry, I kept saying partner. If I'm saying partner, I meant the, the shareholders. If the shareholder um, has income allocated to them next year, that'll increase the, the adjusted basis in the stock. If they contribute more money, you know, buy more, more shares of stock, contribute more money to the uh, S corporation or property, they get to increase their basis for that. There's many different ways you can increase. Uh, loan money personally to the, to the, um, S corporation. Now loans, loans have a separate basis, but we can still use the loan basis when calculating the amount of loss that can be taken. Now, when you're looking at loans, you got to go to the actual liabilities. We're told there's two liabilities, notes payable, Big Island Bank. We are not able to take that into account in the basis. And you're like, uh-oh, well, what about, I thought partnerships, we can do that. Yes. In partnership tax land, you get to take into account all the liabilities, whether you loan the money or whether some another partner or another or a third party did. You get to take that into account, your share. S corporation, you do not get to add in the basis in, in your stock at all, but you are able to add in basis and the loan amount to take that into account for loss 
for the loss limits. Now, the reason why that is because, as many of you know, corporations are separate under law from the individuals. You know, you have articles of an incorporation. Um, the idea there is kind of like its own birth certificate. They're basically living, breathing entities. Well, they're not really living, breathing. Sorry, but they're they're basically a corporation is a separate entity, a separate being for legal purposes versus a partnership is just made up of the owners, like a sole proprietorship. Just, you know, with obviously some differences there in terms of um, depending on what type of partnership you are, there's a liability involved, like a limited liability company or a limited liability partnership. You're going to have pretty much full liability protection in many regards. All right. So the loan amount that's personally loaned, if it's personally loaned, we're going to take into account that basis. Again, the first liability is no payable Big Island Bank. That has nothing to do with pineapple. But the second one, look at that, is pineapple. It is pineapple, so that is $20,000, so we get to put in that $20,000, which we're told the $20,000 amount was this year. Now, taking into account the loss limit for the S corporations, you're able to join these two amounts together the adjusted basis for the stock and the adjusted basis for the loan. Now, again, we don't join them together when we're selling our stock. We keep them separate because, again, remember, separate entity and the corporation takes on the actual loan itself. But we do get to join these two things together. So for the loss limitation purposes, the loss limit is going to be, for basis purposes, is $65,000. So even though there's $72,000 of loss, $65,000 of loss, that's how much pineapple can deduct currently. So let's put that as the answer. $65,000 of loss can be deducted. There are other loss limitations out there, but this is the big one you need to understand, especially it makes a difference as corporation versus partnership. And I'll explain um, if this is a partnership, what we would, would do here. And I'll show you it's going to make a big difference. Um, but the idea here is $65,000 of loss can be deducted. You're asking, what about the remaining $7,000? And then the $7,000 of loss remaining, right? Uh, $72,000 of loss total minus 65,000 is $7,000 loss remaining. That gets carried over to next year where we look at the basis of the loan and the stock again, and we consider if we can take it next year. So it carries over and continues carrying over each year until basically um, Pineapple no longer owns ownership in this um, whether they um, you know, get rid of their interests or, or other events, they can take it eventually. But that $7,000, it continues to carry over and it gets considered. And, and, and again, the basis could go up next year for um, things like income, adding, you know, contributing more, taking on more personal liabilities, things like that. And there'll be another problem that goes over kind of the ordering. You might be wondering, well, do we increase the loan or the stock basis first if we have income? There's another problem I go over with two different years and I show you how that kind of works because that's very important as well. Now, before I leave, I want to sh talk about two different variants of this problem. What if I told you that, that this was now Golden Glow Partnership and Pineapple was a partner? Well, Regardless of whether Pineapple individually loaned it or not, you would join together the two loan amounts, the thirty and twenty thousand, and we take sixty percent of that. So it'd be fifty thousand total liabilities, and we would then um, take sixty percent of the fifty thousand dollars. We join them together. Thirty thousand plus twenty thousand is fifty thousand dollars. Times sixty percent is thirty thousand dollars, and then we'd have forty-five thousand is the amount contributed plus the $30,000, the 60% portion, that's $75,000 of loss limit. And then you could take all $72,000. So you're like, huh, yeah, that's interesting. So being a partnership, it gives you that advantage. Now, again, remember that $7,000 of loss, it would carry over if you're an S corporation. So you're not able to, or you're not losing that benefit of the loss. It's just carrying over. But timing in tax, just like anything in business world, makes a big difference. Because generally you want to accelerate deductions and losses due to time value of money, right? A dollar of tax savings today is worth more than a dollar of tax savings in the future. Holding aside, you know, changes in rates and, you know, being in different brackets next year and things like that. But generally, you want to uh, accelerate deductions. You want to defer income. So that's what would happen if it's a partnership. We basically would combine both liabilities. We wouldn't even care who the note payable is to. Could be pineapple, could be, um, you know, papaya, doesn't matter doesn't matter who it is, we get to take a portion of that 60% of the total amount of liability, which would be 50,000 here, right? 30,000 plus 20,000, 60% of that, 60% of 50,000 is 30,000. So we add that to the 45 and we get 75,000, which would be able to take the full amount, the full $72,000 loss. What if I told you one more variant, this problem, same thing, S corporation. So Golden Globe Corporation, S corporation. What if I said that the second note payable no longer is pineapple individual, it says note payable mango individual. Well, then 
the amount here would just be 45,000, the stock and the loan basis would be zero and you'd be limited to $45,000. And then of course you'd have an even bigger loss to carry over to next year and going forward. So just keep that in mind when you're going through these types of problems that if there's no personal liabilities, you have to personally loan the money to be to get to get it in consideration for S corporations. For partnerships, doesn't matter. S corporations does. Just trying to point out areas where students, uh, exam takers, even even in practice, people have you know forgotten these rules. So make sure you keep that in mind.